Hello, hello, good people. George with Virtual Staging here. Have you ever thought how you can do virtual staging in 360 degrees panoramic images in Photoshop, in 3ds Max, and any other render engine? Well, this is the right place for you to be, because I'm going to show you how you can add 3D objects, furniture and decors in 360 photos with 3ds Max. In this first part, I will show you how to do the perspective mask technique, which I've developed for the time. I'm not saying this is the right or wrong way, this is the way I do it and if you know any other ways how to insert 3d object in spherical photos leave a comment down below and now let's crack on in every virtual staging project the first thing you should do is to add our background photo I'm inside max 2021 and the first thing I'll do is to press alt P to open my viewport configuration but this time instead of using the files options, I'm going to choose the use in very background. This will make your background black surely and I'll convert the scene to Corona and open my material editor. I've already loaded my panoramic photo inside the editor and I have to change the coordinates to spherical. Then I have to insert the photo into the environment tab which I'll open by pressing 8 on my keyboard. I'll drop the photo inside the bar for now and that's it all I need to do with the material browser. The next step is to activate walkthrough option at the bottom right hand side of Max and the icon there is a walking human figure. This is crucial for the perspective match technique of 360 photos. The next thing I have to do is to set the correct output size to match my photo size. There is something which is very common with most panoramic images and that is the image aspect is always 2. So all I need to do is to set that parameter to lock it and then the rest is history. Always make sure to work in resolutions not bigger than 3000 pixels wide as anything over this size will affect your viewport performance, especially if your computer is not with high specs. And now let's grab a box and start building this scene. By the way, if you have not watched my tutorial on perspective match, link is down in the comment, go and watch it after this video, there are tips and tricks how to properly do a perspective match for virtual staging on a static photos. My next step is to activate FOV which stands for filter view option by pressing ctrl W or the icon next to the human figure at the bottom of the, of the max. If you hold down left mouse button and drag towards you, you basically will scale up and you will see more basically or zoom out, doesn't matter how you call it, but this will actually this is your life savior tool. <laughs> With the middle mouse button, you can adjust the location of your object, in, in my case this box, but do not use it all the times because this will make you cry and will destroy your progress. And now I will convert my, I've already converted by the way, my object into editable poly, I'll delete the unnecessary planes and start extruding those edges. Remember, the modeling of the room or all the spaces with the 360 degrees panoramic images happens with the help of the walking human figure down below or the walkthrough option, which this is how it's called. So every time you have to press it and move it and this is how you will build your scene. I know it's a little bit tedious, but this is the way how I do it and so far it's been working great. And by the way, it, it just, it's fun at some point. I mean, as soon as you learn how to do it, it will become a fun for you. At this stage of the project, it is important to align all edges where there is a windows, doors or transitions to other spaces. If you don't achieve outstanding results with this stage of your project, your end results will be compromised, I guarantee you. Here is a nice trick. Let's set a convenient shortcut for the walkthrough tool. By default in Max, it should be the up arrow on your keyboard, but since this button is too far from my left hand, I'll change it to something different. In this case, my keyboard have 24 additional buttons and I'll use it, one of them to set this. For, for instance, control plus something. Then when you're ready, save and click done. And in the next couple of seconds, I will speed up this part of the video because it's a very tedious and boring and slow process. But if you want to follow me, how I do it and what I do it step by step, just slow down the video using the options from this YouTube panel.
This is the time where I've remembered that I didn't lock my object movement. I'm using a script for this purpose, but you can find these options when you select your object, then go to hierarchy, link info and check all available boxes there and this should be it. If you're wondering what exactly I use as modeling tools, well, they are the most basic tools. I use simple edge extrude, cap, polygon connect and 3D snapping tool. And if you are a beginner, all those steps are well explained in my perspective match video, link down the comments. Go and watch it after this one. Do you remember that I locked my object few seconds ago? Yes. Well, I intentionally decided to unlock this and show you what happens if you forget using the walkthrough tool and instead do pan and zoom. BAM! My scene geometry no longer is aligned with the room's corners. Now I have to take the time and align it again. So remember this lesson and be mindful when you're working. It took me almost 15 minutes in real life until I returned my object's alignment as in the beginning. And here is a trick. As soon as you start building your geometry, you can create a standard camera from the view. Its purpose will be to return you to the initial location of your perspective every time when you misalign your position. I almost completed my scene geometry and now I will switch my viewport to add the floor polygon and fix some of the walls I have missed. When you are doing this step, make sure to stay in orthographic mode because if you press perspective, Max will return you to the perspective view from inside the room, therefore you will not be able to do it properly. My floor object basically is a spline which is connected throughout the whole space or throughout the perimeter and then converted to editable poly. And as always it is very crucial to lock your movable objects, in this case my floor, so I will not have any problems and on top of that I will lock my camera as well. This next step is really interesting. This is the setting of my shadow catcher material. All bitmaps connected to the shadow catcher must have their coordinates set to spherical and if you remember that I, in the beginning I just dropped my photo into the environment slot but without anything else, now I must replace this with the tone mapper and the photo into the tone mapper as well. Pay attention to this next part. As soon as I plug my tool mapper into the environment slot, my background environment loses its coordinates and I cannot really see what is behind the room object anymore. And this is by the way when you're inside and looking from the viewport. I suppose this is a bug or something related to the render engine. Leave a comment down below if you know what might be the solution here. Basically this means every time when you want to update or adjust something into the scene, you must return and swap the tool mapper with the bitmap only into the environment slot. This is not a big deal, but when you are in a hurry, it becomes a little obstacle. Let's get back to the rendering part and more precisely, I'll add a couple of lights. Before that, I will add my lovely sphere and check if everything is working fine and it is as it should be. And now let's go and add those lights in orthographic mode because it is easier to see what you are doing especially if you activate the auto grid and the 3D snapping tool. So far I'm pleased with the result but 
Do you see when I'm adding the lights how my viewport texture jumps a little bit? I think this is some sort of glitch. Anyway, it doesn't harm anyone, so I'm fine with that. So far, it is looking great, but let's reduce the overexposed areas by lowering the highlight compress and increasing the contrast so I have a deeper black in the shadows. And as always, I need my white material. And here is a cool trick, guys. I'll copy this sphere and move it into the other room. It is not looking realistic because my sphere is sticking out of the pocket door. To solve this, I need to add one additional polygon on top of the door to precisely align with the door. You can do this in Photoshop by erasing that part you don't need it, but in most cases I do it inside 3ds Max so I spend less time in post-production. And now let's throw a couple of chairs and adjust the lighting to match the lighting from coming from the outside. At first glance, all lights are set to 50 and by default, and this means I have to really adjust them to match the ambient overcast lighting coming from outside. Additionally, on most materials, which are very bright, like this wood, and very close to the light source, I will add a ray switcher to neutralize some of the color bleeding, which I mentioned in another video on my channel, link down below. My chair is a bit out of scale, so it required some adjustments and the lighting multiplayer must be lowered even more. Then I needed to repeat this the same exercise with all of the lights in the scene. Sometimes you can play with the location of the light and see if it is affecting in a positive way your room. If your goal is to become a pro virtual stager and want to learn more about home staging, virtual staging, 3ds Max and those render engines, please leave a like, leave a comment and share with your friends. You will motivate me to make even more great videos. I hope this tutorial opened your eyes for the possibilities of virtual staging for 360 degrees images. There will be at least two other videos covering this scene specifically where I will talk more in depth about the whole process. And now, see you in the next video.